Greetings, 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 and welcome to another edition of Michelle Speaks. If you hide it, you can't feel it. I am Michelle Portier, the host of the hour, and I am super excited about today's guest, who I've had the pleasure of meeting, um, I believe last year sometime, and over the course of that time have grown to learn so much about and who I know is going to bring to you today much value, much insight, much hope and much inspiration. And so without further ado, I want to introduce to you today my very special guest, Mr. Jason Cueva. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on and share with our listening audience today, Jason. Well, it's 100% our pleasure. And uh, I'm humbled and, and uh, nervous at the same time. Uh, but I do the, do the, I feel the fear and do it anyways, right? So there you go. There you go. And what I, what I share with people all the time is that um, if you are not afraid or not nervous, then I have to question, you know, um, even the greatest leader has some kind of um, um, nervousness, you know, and I think that's the thing that kind of propels and brings forth the uh, authenticity and um, the word of hope and inspiration that's needed. So thank you again for joining us today. And I'm super excited. So we're going to get right into it. So for my listening audience, Jason, tell us who is Jason Cueva personally, professionally, and spiritually? All right. Uh, I think this is a great question because, you know, you kind of helped me uh, prepare with this stuff and you've got to you know, we're always trying to figure out who we really are, right? So um, when putting some thought to that, you know, personally, we'll start with that. I'm, I'm really just a fun-loving person that um, really is, is focused on, on leading people right now, you know, um, in those three areas as well, um, personally and, and professionally. Spiritually, I can get stronger on, I believe that, but I really just love having fun and I love people. Um, you know, sometimes people would rather be by themselves. I'm not that person. I'd rather, you know, spend time with people and, and have friends and, and be around, you know, my, my poor wife. I, I, I'm like, hey, I got, to, is it okay if I have, you know, some people over tonight? She's like, I already know you invited 12 people. <laughs> so, right. yeah, so, right. that's okay. uh, so I love just being around people and having that energy. And, and, and uh, I would say I'm, I'm mainly a, a climber in life. I'm always trying to improve on, on in a lot of areas. Um, I like doing fishing. Um, I like hanging out on the boat with people and, and it's so fun having you on there a couple of times. And, right. and uh, just, I, I just want to live life, you know, because with no regrets. And uh, right. I could say that you know, we've we've had a pretty good run so far and I'm excited about the future. You know, could be better, could be worse. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Well, thank, you so thank you so much. Yes, yes. I can, I can attest to you. I don't know why I'm hearing an echo. I can attest to you that you definitely do live life, that you definitely are, um, you practice what you preach. And I'm, I'm totally honored that you're going to share with, with our audience today some things that they can do um, to kind of improve on their life and live life better. And, you know, we are created to connect. You know, I always tell people the root word of community is commune. And I can say, you know, from first meeting you and being able to interact with you and your team, um, I feel that everything that you said is very true. So thank you so much again. And so what I want to ask you, Jason, what led you to the path that you're currently on of wanting to connect and um, wanting to give and wanting to pour out so much and provide so much value in the lives of individuals? So that's a, a, an awesome question as well. Um, what led me to the path was is was exactly kind of how the question is asked because I was I was led to it by not trying to force it. You know, um, I, what what I do now is I do financial education, and uh, I got into it while I was working in golf retail, right? So how how does that work? What can I do that? Well, my my, my lesson in that is that you know you kind of got to let go and just. Um, let things, let the right things show themselves. But then the important part is you got to take action with it, right? Uh, Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates both wrote books. And one of the common themes they have in both of their books is that, you know, that you have to be at the right place at the right time to be successful. But then on top of that, you also have to do something about it, right? So um, 
I, I, you know, I, I looked at a couple different opportunities actually before I settled in with the company I work with now. And but the most important thing was I took action. Right. I, I was willing to try, you know, what people w- would offer to me because I, I believed in people. I was very I don't know if you would say I was gullible or I was really hungry. I was searching. Right. He always say, you know, if uh, if you're a, if a homeless person so- sign is funny, they haven't been homeless very long. Right. So I was I was homeless when it came to career wise and what I wanted to do with my life. And I was really blessed to find a career that actually is what I want to do with my life, which is spending time with people, helping other people get what they want out of their life. Like Zig Ziglar said, eventually you'll get what you want out of it. So um, I was working one day at the golf store. Somebody came in and said, hey, you know, thank you for helping me out. But do you ever keep your options open for bigger and better? And um, I said, who doesn't? Right. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. kind of just kind of followed the path. And I, like I said, I let it lead me that way because I knew I didn't know. Uh, too much about life and and how to do financial stuff. And um, I just kind of let it carry me that way. I followed people that um, that did what they said they were going to do. And I was blessed to have many mentors in our life and still have those uh, and constantly, like I said, let life lead me that way instead of trying to force it. Right. Because uh, you want to make God laugh. Just try and tell him what you plan on doing. Right. (laughs) So. but that's how I got into it. Like I said, I was just working one day at a golf store and somebody talked to me and I'm glad that I was willing to, to try because a lot of people probably got that question. Uh, but, you know, they were too skeptical, right? Too skeptical to try. And I wanted to find out if it was for me or not. And it ended up being a good choice. So, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's awesome stuff. Two of the things that you said, Jason, really resonated and stood out to me. You said to let go and let life lead you. Those are the two things that you said. So the question I have for you for somebody that may be kind of challenged in letting go, what does letting go look like in allowing life to lead you? So that's a two part question. What does that look like and how do you allow life to lead you if you have no experience with life? This is true. Uh, So letting go means really just don't uh, take every waking hour and try and make things happen the way that you think is going to be right. Because, um, you know, I've had many experiences where I thought that this was the way it was going to be. This is the only way it would work. And then I found out, you know, it was a 90 degree you know, shift from what I thought was the best way to do it, right? Um, Sometimes 180 degree, you know, direction that I thought it needed to go, right? So um, you just kind of let, you know, when things, so so I I have a theme of when, when, when things come your way, you know, you got to process, look, is this worth experimenting? Is this worth um, exploring is a better word? Is this worth exploring? Or is this something that I need to cut off right away? Right. But you can't just like let it teeter there. You got to make a decision. Right. Life is all about decision. Right. And the side comes from the word like pesticide. Right. You got to kill pests. Right. Um, You know, there's suicide. where you kill you outside. Right. Um, There's something that you deal with a lot, you know, as well. And helping people, you know, understand that there's a better way. But then decide means you've got to get rid of all your once you make that decision, you've got to kill other options off and follow, you know, and follow that path you know, completely with your heart until something shows up that that doesn't, you know, resonate or doesn't, you know, a lot of the thing we're going to talk about today is, is trusting your gut with things. And, um, you know, because I believe that's your the bigger, you know, not that my gut is that big with the brain, okay, but the bigger part of your brain makes better decisions. And sometimes it's not right. that, you know, that that small brain that, that, that we think is the conscious, it's her subconscious is sending you messages. So kind of let it go. And, and and when I saw what I do today, you know, in my gut, it said, man, this sounds good. Now, there's a lot of actors out there. OK, there's people that can convince you and make you feel good about something or make you do that. And in the beginning, I was a little skeptical. I was like, oh, is it sounds too good to be true. But what I live off of today is I say, look, it sounded too good to be true. OK, just like my marriage today. Right. You know, I'm so grateful you know, that my wife. Um, you know, she's taking care of our kids right now. But, um, you know, we've been together for 22 years now. Right. Uh, if you if you do the math, you know, it's not supposed to work like that. But guess what? It it, it did because we just trusted and let it happen instead of saying, all right, well, if you're going to are we in this for life or whatever? Let's let, let's see. You know, so I, I tell people all the time, you know, I, it was too good to be true, but too good for me not to at least try. 
You know, the love that I felt with my wife when she sh went, the way she looked at me is the same way she looked at me now. To, to statistically say, oh, is that going to be like that forever? Who knows, right? Now, she loves me, but she don't like me all the time. <laughs> That's how that works, right? right. Um, well, you know, love is, is more than what you're feeling at the moment, right? So the same thing, you know, to answer your question going back is what does it feel like to let go is just kind of deal with what you got in front of you, right? The, the, the mm -hmm. saying, and I probably got this from you, is that, you know, the, the past is history, and, you know, the future is a mystery and today is the present. So we got to, you know, open that first. Right. So right. Uh, I, know I screwed that up, but that's what I can do. <laughs> you didn't screw that up. I wanted to tell you that that was good. You didn't get that from me. I believe we got that from a mutual friend of ours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> um, one of the things that I, that, um, I wanted to ask that kind of came up as you were talking, you said you have to make a decision. Um, and so in that making a decision, I know you've probably gotten really good at doing this over the years, but when you are evaluating what to cut off and what to what to pursue, hmm. have you, I'm sure that you've come to, to be an expert or very good at deciphering, you know, those that are just acting or pretending and those that are sincere and, and really want to um, to move forward or to pursue the things, you know, things in life. So how what are some of the things that the characteristics that you've been able to identify when you meet people to let you know that they're sincere or maybe they, they truly desire to, but they're just not ready. And how do you navigate through that or determine whether or not you want to stick in there until they they're ready. If you deem they're not ready. Right. Well, you know, I always say, you know, give, give people a chance, right? Let give people a uniform. Um, you know, as a friend, right? If you and because we're just using a general um, universal um, uh, mentalities here, but I give everybody a chance to be a friend until proven until they prove otherwise, right? I give, you know, and some people say that's a fault, but I've I've trusted a lot of people with a lot of things, okay? And you know, until they prove otherwise, you know, I I give them a chance, and and then sometimes you you will run into a dead end, but I don't think it's ever a waste of time. Because, you know, if you lose, you lose the lesson, you know, you never lose the lesson. Right. You know, you know, don't right. let it happen again. That kind of thing. Um, right. You know, the decide means to to to. Well, I, I'll put it this way. A lot. I found that. And this is what was taught to me is that successful people make decisions quickly and change them slowly. A lot of unsuccessful people, they vacillate for a long time and they take forever to make a decision. And then when they make the decision, they change it instantly. Right. So. Um, we found that, you know, sometimes we run the wrong play, but a good mentor of mine, uh, Jim, said that if you run in the wrong direction long enough, the earth is round. It'll eventually be the right direction. <laughs> ah, that's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Literally, that's a long Thank time to run, it. but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, given the current state that we're in now in, in our community and in society, in our country, um, how have you or have you been impacted by the concurrent pandemics that we're encountering? And how has that impacted the communities that you serve and that you live in? Yes. Well, you know, it's a uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Business wise. I'll, well, let's start with personal wise. You know, it really um, the mentalities that we've lived, which is kind of uh, keeping friends around and stuff like that, have kept us in a very, uh, I guess, high state of, of, of happiness. I really haven't, you know, uh, and I know that's not the case, you know, universally speaking, but that's, you know, some of the decisions we made early was to have a lot of, you know, good friends and give, 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 right? There's givers in life and then there's takers, right? So um, not that I'm taking now, but, you know, we have a great circle of friends that we've been blessed with um, that we still go fishing together and stuff like that personally wise. And um, so the, 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 the state of the country or in the world really has has had not had a lot of effect personally wise um you know we've we've got great connections with friends and you know family stuff has kind of you know uh there's been some stresses there because of different beliefs in certain areas but i always have a theme of live and let live look you know if that's if that's what you're you know what how you want to uh, approach this then uh, then god bless you right um, just don't try and force it on me, right? One way or the right. other. Right? I'm not picking a side there, right? But just, you know, live and let live, right? Now, I don't want to offend anybody uh, on anything. So I try and be respectful of other people's decisions as well. So business-wise, though, um, it's been it's been surprisingly um, 
good for business. Um, we do a lot more of video things. And, you know, what, and what I do is in the areas of, of people's financial, you know, uh, stress in life. Matter of fact, I'll start with this. Our mission statement is to eliminate the stress, worry, and frustration of money in families' mm-hmm. lives so they can focus on what really matters most. So in what I do on a daily basis, which is you know, financial education, uh, the current state of the, the world really opened up and normalized video meetings with people. So our team is literally, our business is literally doing three times more business because we have access to more people that are willing to listen, you know? So, um, you know, spiritually wise, you know, I, I know that um, I'm always getting get better at that. You know, we, we um, it actually brought our family together, you know, um, more uh, spiritually wise, because we do our worship service at the house, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, you know, we, we, we trade off who's going to be hosting and we do things like that. So, you know, the, the pandemic, um, has created, you know, um, it's always an opportunity, right? You know, we can't control the wind. We can control the way we set our sails. So, um, you know, we've, I I don't know if it's what, you know, if we had things in place already or whatever it may be, I truly believe it's the attitude that we've taken with, you know, not just the pandemic, but everything in our life is, Look, we're going to take what we have and we'll do the best with what we got, because what, what else are you going to do? You complain about it. Right. You can't do that. You can pray about it. You know, but pray stands for uh, or push. We call it push. You know, pray until something happens. OK. Right. And uh, we did right. that. and It scared us in the beginning, uh, scared right. us silly. But that that sometimes, you know, crystallizes your commitment. And, and, and it really brought us together as, you know, like I said, personally wise, you know, our family, you know, uh, got us closer. Uh, business wise, business has been really good because we we had, you know, we had Zoom videos going on or video meetings going on. But as soon as the, you know, everything hit, we started doing more of that. And I literally did an appointment with somebody in Arizona this morning and then somebody in the Florida Keys, you know, at the, in, the, in the same hour. <laughs> that didn't happen, you know, before. So, um, you know, everything is a blessing in disguise is really what. Right. And so, you know, I really love what you said about you can't control the wind, but you can control the way that you set your sail. And so it sounds like um, this pandemic has enhanced all of the areas in your life, you know, personally, professionally and um, spiritually, um, which I believe people can take, you know, note of that um, and really grasp onto that. And maybe that will increase their, their hope and their faith and, you know, with everything that's going on right now during the pandemic that even in spite of, you know, you can't control that, but you can control how you you face it or you go into it because, you know, that's um, part of sailing is how you how you flow with the wind or how you, yeah, I'm not much of a sailor. You know more about that than me. I, I am a sailor in the sense that I was in the military, but not as far as, you know, directing or, or guiding the ship, for lack of a better way to say that. And so, you know, for, the, for someone that is struggling to find, um, purpose and to find meaning in their life because you found yours, you know, you were on the path, you were on the journey and it was kind of like, didn't really fall into your lap, but you just took advantage of that opportunity. What would you say to someone that's struggling to find purpose and meaning? That's a, um, uh, excellent question. And, and it kind of piggybacks on what you said earlier. Um, you know, a, a thing that I, I really teach people a lot of times is that, you get in life what you focus on the most, right? Uh, I'm sure if you took a, a, a pessimistic person and had them uh, examine our life, and they could make a long list of all the things that the that the pandemic hurt us in, right? right. Uh, but I choose to focus on the things that it helped us in, right? Um, there's areas, of course, n- nothing is ever going to be 100% positive, right? But whatever you focus on grows in life. If you focus on struggle and 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 scarcity, you know that's what brings more into your life. And and I meant to say this earlier too. Thank you so much for your service. I can't ever talk to you and, and tell you you know I, how much we appreciate you know what you did for our country and continue to do. By the way, um, so but whatever you do, you know you whatever you focus on grows positive and negative. And that's taking the ultimate accountability because your life is is a reflection of what, you know, of how you uh, reacted to what happened to you. You know, we're not, um, you know, a product of our, completely a product of our environment because we choose our environment. Does that make sense? If somebody is is not 
serving you in, in an area. And, I, and that sounds wrong, but if somebody's not, um, you know, a, a good vibe with you, I guess you could say, then you choose to stay with them or stay around them. That's that's not your pro you're a product of your environment. You chose that environment. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. when when somebody's zigging and I'm zagging, you know, we 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 separate. And guess what? Let live and let live. Right. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is, is, is struggling right now, this is and and I know they probably don't want to hear this part, but, you know, just 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 start with gratitude. And I learned that from you, Michelle. OK, start with oh, gratitude. Wow. Appreciate the things that you have, because at any point in your life, there's somebody that would absolutely, without even thinking about it, switch places with you. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always think, oh, man, I wish I had, you know, that or I wish I had this. You know, when we had nothing, I still knew that somebody would love to have what we have, right? Sometimes I wish I had thicker hair, right? But I promise you, there's somebody that wishes they had, you know, this little bit of a, you know, bundle of sticks I got up there, right? Um, there's somebody that always has the nice little car. Somebody would want to trade for your car, right? Um, what is the saying? I, you know, I, I used to be mad about the shoes that I have until I met the guy who had no feet, right? So, um, you know, if you focus on 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 what you what you want. And, and be grateful for what you have, I believe God steadies your cup before he fills it, right? So focus on what you have, focus on what you want, and I believe you can't help but attract the things that you want more in your life. And um, I think that's why I'm grateful to have the relationship that I have with you to, to do this this type of stuff, get me out of my comfort zone. And, um, you know, and, and, a, and a lot of other friends that I, I think are tuned in actually too. So, but, um, but yeah, if, if you're struggling, look, you know, um, you, you have to address what you have to address, but but put more energy and write out your goals on a daily basis if you have to, um, you know, focus on where you want to truly be. Right. And be specific. Right. You know, uh, I, I believe that the universe likes being specific. Right. Um, so where do you want to be? Make it measurable. You know, be grateful for what you have. Right. Start every morning, you know, with li a list of things that you're grateful for and then a list of things that you want to in the future be grateful for. Because if it's true, if you say, you know, uh, people laugh when I, I teach doing affirmations, right? I have this long list of affirmations that we kind of get standardized. And the fact is, if you're not doing affirmations, you are doing affirmations. See, but the ones that other people gave you, oh, I got a headache. Today's going to be a long day. Uh, oh, man, I'm going to suck at this. Well, guess what? The universe answers every time. It'll give you what you ask for, right? So, um, so focus on where you want to be, focus on, you know, what you, what you have. And like I said, God steadies your cup before he fills it. And, and, and I truly believe we're a product of that mentality of, you know, being grateful for what we have, because we've been at many points where, you know, we were getting our butts kicked and, um, you know, we're still getting our butts kicked in so many areas, but we're, we're not, we're not totally satisfied with where we're at, but we're very glad we're not where we used to be. Right. A, a, a fun one also is don't ever be scared that um, what is it? Don't be scared of of not hitting your goal. Be more scared of being in the same place a year from today. And man, that yes. that's a that yes. one anchors with me and it resonates because I've missed probably ninety nine percent of my goals in life. Ninety nine percent, maybe one hundred and ten percent I've missed of my goals I've missed. But I sure I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. I've always right, moved, right. always move forward, sometimes backwards, but we always made a move. Right. So just don't want you, right. you know, don't be scared of not hitting your goals. Be scared of being in the same place one year from today. And uh, that, that, that mentality has helped us a lot. So basically so you're basically saying, keep, saying moving. keep moving. Keep moving. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I really love that. Right now, there's no moss, right? <laughs> well, I really love that statement you made. You said God steadies your cup before he fills it. And I think that is so impactful and so important to bring out because, um, you know, a lot of times we pray, you know, God, fill my cup, fill my cup. And there's that saying that you can't pour from an empty cup. But in order for that cup to be filled, you have to be still sometimes in, in order for it to, to be filled so that you can continue to feel. So I really love that. And I wanted to um, also touch on, you said, you know, um, I take you out of your comfort zone and that, you know, you were a little bit nervous about today or, or, or afraid. But, you know, what you've done is something that I say all the time. It's one of my little sayings, you know, don't allow your fear to paralyze you. Use that fear to propel you. And you're such a phenomenal force in this community. You know, 
um, people that I've known for years, you know, I mentioned your name. They're like, oh, yeah, I know him. I'm like, wow, you know, he's really made made impact, great impact in this community. And so, you know, to hear from you that you're a little bit afraid, you know, that's that was like, wow, really? But you can't see that. And this is the thing, you know, Joyce Myers has a saying, you know, do it afraid. And so that's what I love about your energy and about your drive. And even that of Jen, even though I know she's not here today, she had to take care of the little ones. Yeah. But um, you're so phenomenal and, and you make it look so effortless about doing things afraid. And so, you know, just thank you for, for the for what you're sharing and what you're pouring into our community. Oh, and yes. So, I always feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, it's a good book out there, but you don't need to read the whole book. You just need to feel the fear and then do it anyway. And then right. trust yourself, kind of that let go type of thing. You know, right. I didn't know what I was going to say and I didn't know, you know, how, how things were going to go. But um, just trust yourself. Don't don't think you need to to know everything. Right. You know, from the, a movie I saw, The Secret, it says you can drive from New York to California, you know, New York to California and only see the next X amount of how far we can see. I don't know. You can see a mile or something like that. But right. um, just, just just trust yourself and just know that nobody's perfect and, and, and you don't have to be the best. And. Um, you just have to do your best, right? Right, right, right. And so you were saying as far as your goal setting, um, you know, write out and make, make it specific, you know. Well, in this book that I know that I follow, um, it says, you know, in Habakkuk 2 and 2, write the vision and make it plain. So those mm -hmm. that seek, run with it. And so I will have to say from, you know, the time that I've known you, you very, very, very much so have written your vision. And um, I've seen all the successes in those that are on your team where that vision um they have run with the vision and now they're multiplying. And so you're you're not only replicating and duplicating yourself, but you're creating more positive impact in this world, which is very much needed in this time. And so my question for you, now that you've written this vision and others are running with it, going forward, what is the vision for the Cuevas, the Cueva family um, going forward? <laughs> so the vision is, is to constantly be growing, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and I and and all those areas, right? You can, you know, we have the seven Fs, right? If you want to go that route, um, but I'll, I'll simplify it to this: what what our vision is to constantly be inspiring people uh, to get themselves to the next level, whether it's you know relationship wise, you know, um, you know, what do you call it? We want people to have great friendships, um, great marriages, if that's what they want. If they want to have great, you know, whatever it may be, right? We want to help people keep inspiring people because I truly believe that inspiration is 99% external, right? So we want to, you know, provide an environment, you know, whether people work with us or not, we, we keep a lot of good friendships um, because you never know how, you know, somebody may need to inspire you one day um, or you need to inspire them, but it, it's good to keep those those connections, right? So our vision for, for, for me and my wife and, and our two boys is to, you know, I would say for my kids, there's two things that I have as, as, uh, as their standard, right? I, want, I only want two things from our kids because some people say, oh, I want them to do this. Or I want them to be that. Or are they going to do this or whatever it may be? Well, I want them to be respectful and I want them to be respectable mm -hmm. right now. That has a lot of underlying pieces to it, but that's how I want to live my life. I constantly want to be respectful to other people. Right? I don't want to offend anybody else. Do I do it all the time? Yes. And I don't mean to, but you know, I've tried. At least, at least I'm being aware of it, right? Uh, so I want to be respectable, but I also want to be respectful, right? So respectful to me, just to give you like a, 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 a tip into that, is right, if you know what I'm gonna ask. Do, what's that? I said, right, because you know I was gonna ask. <laughs> what yeah. does that mean to you? So respectful to me is if you're a, you know, I've been doing what I do, it'll be 19 years in January, right? Mm -hmm. If you do something for 19 years and you're not at a certain level of team size, income size, um, knowledge, right? That's not respectful to me, right? I, I don't respect that, right? So guess what? I want to respect myself and say, look, I've done this for 20 years, 19 years in January, and this is what I've done. And I, I and if that's not the case, then I need to start working now, right? Um, Health-wise, right? Um if I'm not, you know, I, as we go, you know, age can make us less healthy, right? Can, right. but we can also choose to to constantly learn. I, I read a, a couple books this year that I've never done before on health, right? So being respectful or respectable to me, that's that's where I want to constantly go. Now, um, Jason, does that mean you live off of, you know, you feed off and validate yourself from other people's respect? No, it's my self-respect is what I'm saying. You know, I want my kids to be like that. I want me to be like that as well. 
You know, um, I, I want my wife to uh, to see me as the as respectful and respectable. Right. I want to deliver for for her. You know, we made that commitment in 2007. That's 13 years ago. You know, and that's that's for us. You know, we've been doing that for each other. She's always played her role. You know, uh, has she been perfect? No. But then now that gives me uh, understand. Oh, good. Thanks. She's not perfect because I'm not perfect. Right. Um, so the, our vision is to is to constantly grow our team. You know, you, I have specifics. We want to have 100 regional vice presidents in our business in the next five years. Right. Um, we have seven. Right. So, like I said earlier, I never hit I, I don't think I've ever hit a goal. Right. Or a real big goal. OK. However, we, we move up. You know, if you if you aim for the moon, you'll land amongst the stars. So we want to have 100 regional vice presidents in our business. And, uh, you know, if we land at 88, you know, we'll set another goal. Right. Um, we want to you know, get healthier. We want to keep a strong relationship with with my parents, right? my two sisters. You know, we want to have you know, relationships with our, you know, our fishing buddies. We want to have and you know, we want to have all that stuff. And, and, and I truly do believe that you can have it all. I, I'm not subscribing to, oh, you can't have it all. No, you can be financially free. You can run a business. You can be you know, you can be a great employee and have it all right. Uh, if you focus on those things. So, you know, if you ask me the, the, the things that are that are our checklist is, have we helped other people get out of their career what we got out of it, which is, you know, eliminating the stress, worry and fear of money. That's one area we want to help people in. And then, you know, have we, you know, uh, done a good job for our family, right? For our parents, they, they did sacrifice so much to come to this country so that we could, you know, um, be successful. But also, you know, we want to make them say it was worth it, you know. Um, I think the best gift you can give to your parents is uh, is showing them that you're you're OK when they when they move on. Right. Um, so hopefully that's, you know, 80 years from now. So that would make my dad about, you know, 200 right. years old. But, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, you know, we want to we want to constantly get better in those areas. And, and like I said, we just don't want to be in the same place of where we're at. So I have a long list of, of I have a I have a specific car I want to drive in a year from now. I have a specific weight and, and BMI and all this stuff. So I have that list, but I don't want to bore you guys with that. We just want to constantly get better and uh, inspire right, other right. people uh, to not follow right. us, but to, to say, look, if I can do it, then you can do it. And um, yeah. I think that would be the ultimate like checklist and say, wow, you know, because we didn't, you know, give up, this person stayed with it and now look at their life. And, and we have people that are way more successful than us uh, that we inspired in the beginning stages. And, and, and uh, you know, I don't take credit for it. Right. Because if I take credit for your success then I take credit for your failure. But I do uh, have joy in knowing that we were a part of that. You know, even if we were just the bumper, you know, that kind of bumped them in the right direction. And, and that's that's everything to us. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. good stuff. That's good. And I hope that my audience will take you away with the way that they're seeing out here today by Jason. Um, Jason, so how do you um, how do you find the balance? How do you balance all of those things in life that you want to do that you for, for the vision going forward? So how do you find the balance to give enough time or to focus enough time on the family and then on building the business and then on inspiring others? How Where does that balance come in? How do you keep you know, how do you uh, not neglect um, other areas in your life while giving? Yes. That's a, uh, another question that I love um, because it's, it's going to be a lot of oxymorons I'm going to go through yeah. here. Um, but the fact is, is that, you know, you're never going to, there's never going to be perfect timing, right? So mm -hmm. you just got to, you know, when it comes to family, I, I did something, well, and, and I, Jen will vouch to this. I constantly ask her, hey, what can I do to make your life better? Right. That doesn't mean I can always do it, <laughs> but right. whether it's put my socks in the right place or can you unload the dishwasher? <laughs> um, right. But uh, when it comes to that, you know, when it comes to our family, I schedule time. Right. I say, look, this is the time that I'm going to do this. Right. Um, I, I guess it's kind of a generic answer, but I schedule time, you know, for myself, I, I schedule time to go, you know, go on the boat and go fishing with other people. Most of the time I'm very social. I don't like to go fishing or golfing by myself. I like to go with other people. So I, I think a lot of it is, is making time for things, whether you, you make it, you know, um, what do you call it on your schedule or, or like a, my phone or calendar or whatever. Um, but just making sure that you, 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 number one, you write out your goals, right? You have those goals and then you're making time um uh to to improve in those areas right so the the f's that i was talking about earlier is your 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 and you can put them in any order your faith right your family your finances your firm right 
your friends, and I'm going through this fast, right? Uh, for others, right? And I always forget number seven because I said that when I started this, that's power of affirmations. But six is good to start, right? So, you know, right. how are you doing, right? You want to gauge yourself on that, right? The, the last one's coming to me, okay? Um, uh, yeah, anyways. So how are I'm you doing? Grade yourself from time. What's that? I'm curious to know what the, the rest are self-explanatory, but firm, what is that? Well, it's a, another way of saying your career or your business <laughs> with an F. So that it's easy to remember. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Yep, yep. Oh, fitness is the last F, right? Which is clearly the I'll one that I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, you know, it's good to grade yourself on those things from time to time and say, all right, how am I doing in these areas? And does that create ultimate balance? No, but it nudges you in the direction like, hey, I'm, I'm not happy with my fitness right now. I'm not happy with my faith right now. I'm not happy with my for others right now, which is giving to people. Right. Um, right. I'm not happy with, you know, in, in those in, in those areas. And it and and the way you create balance is, you know, you can be balanced with that one thing at a time for that day. Right. Because if you think you're going to master all seven of them at the one time, at the same time, you know, you got another thing coming. You're setting yourself up for failure with that. So, you know, just, you know, just let go again. Right. And say, all right, these are the things I need to work on. Right. Um, I, I don't want to be wealthy and unhealthy. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to gain the world and lose my faith. Right. I don't right. want to, um, you know, what do you call it? Have everything and be broke. <laughs> you know, so you've got to find, you know, make time for certain things, um, you know, and just be willing to be truthful to yourself. And and, and uh, I, I actually even had a, a health coach for a whole year and she did an awesome job for me and taught me some things. And I, she taught me how to do this clean sweep. Um, and I got addicted to it. What, what means is it's this whole checklist and you do a survey on yourself. And uh, she said, do this once a year. Well, I do it every you know three months, every six months. And it helps me realize, oh, man, because what some of the questions are like, do you make your bed? I'm like, oh, all right. So I'll fix that. <laughs> so, you know, it's you just thing. yeah, just be aware of the things um, uh, that that can 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 move you in that, that right direction. But I don't believe that you can, you know, I don't believe that anybody is truly 100% balanced at any time. So don't set yourself up for failure and think you're going to have that. Just say, look, I, I know I can do what I can today, right? Um, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Just work on getting better because there, there's many uh, uh, people that, that teach that it's not about perfection, it's about progression, Right. So yeah. to keep balance is, you know, when I feel when I trust my gut and I hear, oh, man, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with the wife. OK, guess what? I need to book some time for that. Right. I haven't spent time with this friend. We need to book some time for that. Right. I haven't spent right. time for myself. I need to book some right. time for that. And then and then don't be muddled in it. Now, I also do business while I'm fishing. Right. So because I love fishing, if you guys know me. So. I, I always think people like, well, you should, you know, you should cut all that off. Well, no, first of all, don't tell me what I need to do. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm allowed to go fishing is because I do a good job helping my clients. So I have my earbuds in, I'll make calls and they're like, well, you're not getting in. You know, look, I get relaxed when I go fishing and do business. Maybe you don't. So you don't have to do it that way. Right. Live and let live. So um, I can mix things, right? When I'm playing with my kids, I, you know, I'll answer a text message here and there. I, I don't, I'm not trying to be, like I said, perfect in those areas. Uh, sometimes it'll help, you know, put your, like right now, I have my phone. Nobody can get to me right now. Okay. Cause I want to be, you know, hundred percent focused here. So just, just be flexible with things and don't, and uh, what do you call it? Don't, don't uh, put yourself too much in a box. What you want to do is you want to, you know, like I said, kind of move in the right direction at all times. So the balance will come, you know, when you're getting progress and where you're getting a little bit better in some areas and, and you will be balanced in, in more areas than others sometimes. And, and that's okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So one of the so things, that things that really stood out, stood out oftentimes, oftentimes we overlook simple things. Thing. And one of those things that she said is something as simple as making your bed every day. Like for me, I know for myself, I, Everything has to be um, in order. If there's clutter in, in, in externally, physically, then I'm cluttered. I'm cloudy mentally, emotionally. No, not emotionally. I'm sorry. Mentally. I'm not you know, dealing with one of my clients. That's why I got into the emotional. Sorry, guys. So and that's so key. You know, it's, it's the simple things that can kind of get us off key. So I love what you said about, you know, in finding that balance, you know, what's balancing for you. 
And so um, that's, that's key for those that are listening in. So Jason, what has been one of your most defining moments, if you can recall, or one of your most defining moments? Yes. Um, so I, I, when, when I saw that, that was a good question. And I had to dig deep because, you know, like I said, I'm a very positive person, right? So um, I always tell people, you know, because people are like, how many people quit on you? Well, I don't, I, I've never had anybody quit that I remember. <laughs> so I kind of move on, right? So uh, I had to dig deep and not really dig too deep, but I remember there was a defining moment that happened and it was uh, April of 2010. And uh, I had been, you know, doing what I do at that point for eight years, right? And mm -hmm. I had really, um, I'd been, I've doing, I, I was doing it softly at that time. I was doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I was, I was sometimes coachable, sometimes I was chokeable, right? And um, what happened was our bubble burst because there were some things that happened in, in, uh, in our very close friend's life that um, really shocked me and my wife. We, you know, we were, we were just married for about a, you know, a couple of years at that point. And um, we, we, we didn't know like this could happen. Right. And so, so their, 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 their marriage was, was, was not staying together. And that actually woke us up. It felt like our parents actually. And at that point, like our world was like, holy cow, what, what are we going to do? You know, cause they were actually mentors with us too. And, and what, what happened was it defined us as like, all right, we've got to step up and get more focused um, because that just kind of like the pandemic did for us. Right. It scared us. Right. We're like, oh my gosh, that could happen to us. And you know, you know, that's, not, you know, we don't want that to happen to us. And it actually shored up a couple uh things in our marriage that, you know, um, that we needed to resolve that we had been carrying with us. Right. So I guess kind of working into this as, as the lesson of it is, you know, when there's, um, turmoil in our life, it's actually an opportunity, right? We, we, I, I believe, and, and not to tie it completely to money, but I believe we get paid in direct proportion, okay, to the amount of crap we could deal with. So the more crap that's coming at you, pardon my French, okay, um, the more stuff that's coming at you, then you, then you know, you're you're actually in for a pay raise, right? So we had a lot of turmoil in our life at that time, okay, and. Um, you know, some of our, our 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 deepest connections were getting severed like instantly. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Like, what are we going to do? We had no we didn't know if our future was going to be the same because you know, we had all these great plans. But what happened really was it was a bubble that finally burst for us. And we were we were able to get to dig in and really start, um, what do you call it, working on a lot more areas of our life because we realized mm -hmm. then that nobody was invincible. And it was a right. huge blessing in disguise that we, um, you know, we cried a lot together because we didn't know what was going on there. Like I said, there were some things between, you know, me and my wife that we had to shore up, you know, things that we, we kind of buried deep down until this moment. We said, look, you know, we need to get everything out on the table. Tell me what what's going on there. And was that easy? No, no way. Right. And uh, but, you know, you say it all the time, Michelle. OK, what you hide, you can't heal. Is that right? Did I say it right? If you hide it, you can't heal it. Okay. So guess what? Up until t April 2010, we were hiding things. And wow. my goodness, you know, I get emotional thinking about it. But if it wasn't for that bubble getting burst, we wouldn't have, who knows what, you know, what it would have, uh, you know, the, that, that damage or whatever we didn't heal, what could that have turned into down the road? And uh, right, so that right. was a defining moment for us. We, 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 we were tested, right? And it brought us closer, right? They say gold gets tested in the fire. So, you know, um, our fire, you know, we, we got, we were going through the furnace and we melded together team wise. Uh, we melded together, you know, marriage wise, we melded together with our mentors even stronger. And um, we needed that. Just like, like I said, you know, the 2008 was a challenge that brought us another pay raise. Cause we got, we started dealing with more stuff, you know, um, you know, excuse me, 2020 for, again, you can't adjust the wind, but you can adjust your sales. You know, our business literally tripled since March um, because our team adjusted the sales and they said, look, we're not going to change this. Let's run with what we got. And, um, you know, we were, I truly do believe that we are blessed though. I believe God has his hands on our, on our business and our team and our lives in a very, very strong way. And, and, and we always right. pointed to that too. Our credit is right. not to us. We didn't do this. This is what God did for us. OK, not to mm -hmm. us. And um, mm -hmm. you know, we looked at it as a blessing and we and our team has absolutely ran with it. So it's uh, it, awesome. it's. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much for all of these, these, these nuggets and these insights that you're sharing with us today. You know, I wanted to hone in on something that you said that you used um, that turmoil is an opportunity to, um, to grow. And so that defining moment in your life, what it caused you and Jen to do was kind of reassess. And instead of, you know, you had to make the decision, this is the person that I chose to partner with for life. You know, we're going to use this to kind of draw together and deal with all of the hard things. And so um, and now look at how you guys have prospered and grown, you know, in every area, um, personally, professionally, financially, spiritually, socially, all of that, because you made the decision, which is what you said earlier, make a decision. Um, and so I just want to kind of I wanted to kind of hone in on that. And then you said something. Um, God, I. You said it and I was holding on to it because I wanted to, to mention it because I wanted to ask you. Oh, you said something. You said something about you can have everything and still be broke. So can you kind of expound on that for like somebody that's listening in and wants to kind of, you know, unpack that? Yeah. So um, I think what I was meaning at that point was is that there's there's people that subscribe to. Oh, well, you you can't have everything you want in life and you can want everything that you have, though. So doesn't that mean you have everything that you want, right? In a sense. So oh, that's good. Um, I think finances is a very important part of our life. Um, I'm not saying that money is my God by any means. Um, mm -hmm. We all know that how that how people misconstrue the Bible to say, oh, money is the root of all evil. It's not. It's the love of money. Is the root of yeah. all evil, right. So um, I think when you, when you say you have it all, money is not um, is nothing more than like a paintbrush to an artist. OK, it's a tool. You know, it when when the Red Cross says, please send prayers. OK. And what you're they're praying for is some checks, too. <laughs> OK. So right. sometimes you need, you know, when you when you're able to, to to get your finances in a good place, I'm not saying you need to be a billionaire. You don't need to be the rich, richest man in the graveyard. Right. Like Steve Jobs said, what you need to do is you need to be in a place where you're saving the money that you want to save or you're giving the money that you want to give and you're making the money that gives you, you know, life, right? Because um, people that say money can't buy happiness um, are shopping in the wrong place. You know, um, it, it can get you, it, it can get you more time, right? With the people right. that you want, right? We're, we're going on a trip tomorrow that without money, I mean, I could, you know, cook some hot dogs for them, but I think they're going to have more fun where we're going, you know, right. um, you know, money does not buy love, Money does not buy, you know, happiness completely, but it can give you a good down payment. Right. And um, so, you know, being having it all, I think money is a, is a function of that, a part of that. Right. Is mm -hmm. it the, the, the does it buy everything for you? No. But, you know, being broke and, yeah. and, and uh, is going to tap against your spirit, too, because sometimes mm -hmm. you want to give to certain people. You want to give more mm -hmm. to your church. Right. You want to give more to, you know, your loved ones. Now, you don't want to hurt them because sometimes it's it's actually very difficult to not hurt people when you give them things. But, man, if, if, if you're able to set up a, you know, a system where it's a reward. Hey, look, if you're able to do this, this and this, I'll take care of the rest. Well, wow, you know, you could do that with money. So um, being able to, um, you know, going back to my mission statement as a as a business is to eliminate the stress, worry and frustration of money in people's lives so they can focus on what really matters most. Well, you know, money is just like air and water. It's not a challenge until you run out of it. Right. So mm -hmm. if we could put people in a, a better position where they're, you know, uh, saving more of their money, um, being able to make more money, um, that helps them get closer to having, you know, having it all per se. But Having it all doesn't mean you're you're Jeff Bezos with you know 180 billion dollars. You know, right. I'm, I I actually honestly believe this, Michelle. And this is probably kind of a weird. You'll you'll see how I do things, but I bet you, he would wish he wishes he could trade lives with me, right? Mm. Because there's with uh, what, what what do you call it? The great philosopher uh, May said, "More money, more problems." Right? So, um, you know, he who knows. Right now, do I really, 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 really believe that? No, but I bet you there's areas that he would love to trade. You know, he didn't right. catch a, a 38 inch redfish uh, two weeks ago. So we'll see. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. So, 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 Jason, with in today's society and the ever evolving technology and 
avenues of, of gaining and gaining and gaining information. And there's a sea of information and you're trying to move forward and you're trying to find balance in your life to be able to say you found your passion and your purpose. And now you're looking for ways to to fund it and make sure that you're surrounded in the right environment. What would you say to that person that is like, um, they don't know which way to turn because there's so much information. How do they quiet the noise to, to be able to find what is beneficial to them to be able to be the best versions of, of themselves that they can be? Well, I would, I would like to say, uh, if you do find out how to do that, call me. <laughs> I definitely don't know how uh, completely to do that. I mean, I think it does circle back around to that making a decision. Um, I didn't know that my career path was going to be um, as rewarding as it is. And who knows, I might have made another decision that made my career path even more rewarding, right? Um, but once you make a decision, you know, really stick with it. You know, so many people, I, I don't believe anybody really fails in anything that they do. I truly mm -hmm. believe that most people quit too soon, right? Mm. Um, so if you were to, you know, whatever you choose, go 100% at it, right? Um, and, and, and don't look back until, you know, until it's obvious, right? Let, let go and just say, look, I'm doing this, you know, until it works, not if it works, right? And with the sea of information, like you're saying, you know, um, be careful. There's always going to be naysayers. I mean, your, yeah. your closest family members are going to tell you that it's, you, you should be doing this and that. OK, uh, matter of fact, here's a good thing. If you if everybody that you uh, ever if everybody agrees with you, OK, um, you're on the wrong path, because with what most people have is struggle and lacking and are, are dissatisfied. So, so you have to swim upstream if you don't. OK. Um, you're really on track to be a lemming to get what everybody else is getting. They're falling off the cliff left and right. So you have mm -hmm. to be willing to swim upstream, right? So, um, you know, sort, so sort it out in your head and make a decision and then run in that direction, okay? Right. And be focused. Don't second guess yourself. Just go for it. Just keep on going for it because like I, I mentioned earlier, my mentor Jim said, if you run in the wrong direction long enough, the earth is round. It'll be the right direction eventually. I mean, it'll take you 12,000 miles to do it, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but don't be afraid, so, make a decision and run with it. So basically you're saying what, well, in a sense, what I got was don't, don't run off the cliff um, following the herd, but continue to make your own path on the decision that you've made, letting yeah. go and letting life lead you. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so, you know, we're coming close to, you know, our time um, today, but I, I wanted you to share um, with my listening audience, and one, what has been the secret to your success or has been or is? And then can you share with my my listening audience a takeaway and a call to action? Yes. So uh, it just came to me actually at this point right now. So um, I've had a blast, by the way, too, Michelle. Thank you so much. This time flew like that. Um, so what is our key to success? Well, first of all, um, I don't really believe we're a success yet. There's so much more that we can do, right? Um, my key to success, I guess, if you're going to ask me at this point is constantly be learning, right? Because the person who thinks they know everything really knows nothing. If somebody <laughs> gives you an opportunity, like all the time people say, hey, can I show you what I do? I, yes, I can, I'd love to hear what you're doing. Because many times I went into an appointment, right? Thinking it wasn't going to be for me. And then it ended up changing my life in so many areas. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of my, like I never thought I would be a fisherman because here's the funniest part. I don't like fishing. I mean, I don't like eating fish. I don't eat any kind of seafood. If it comes from the right. sea, it doesn't go in my mouth. Not because I'm allergic or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. Right. But one day I was talking with a good friend of mine and uh, he's a fisherman. I was like, Hey, you know, I, just like in conversation, I was like, Hey, can you show me how to go fishing? You know, in my backyard, I think there's fish there. And something clicked, and I guess it's the Filipino. God bless you, the Filipino. I mean, all of a sudden, I, I'm addicted to fishing. I love fishing, right? Right. Um, in fact, going to the office that I first started and where I work now, um, I, I actually showed up after playing a round of golf, which means I disrespected the the opportunity so much. I wore golf spike. I wore a hat the whole time in a business meeting because I didn't think it was for me. But thank God I explored it first 
before I turned right. it down. Now it's 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 a, it's it's not a career for me. It's a way of living, right? Yeah. So the lesson in that is constantly be learning, and then you know you never know where you know your next you know uh, adventure is going to come from, right? So don't ever <laughs> you know uh, don't stop cutting things off. You know, explore it, and then once you realize it's not a good idea, then get out of there really quickly. But give it a try because you never know. Because when nobody just knows everything, right? So I would say my key to success is constantly learning constantly try th try new things and you know make decisions that you know move you in the right direction and, and cut off things that are bad right but i have a, a fun takeaway that I, I i believe that i came up with it i'm not positive okay so i'll 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 i'll, I'll say i i because I, I don't remember where i got it from if i did get it from somewhere but here's a fun thing i like to do okay and i've done this in trainings and again i'm a little weird but here's how i like to think right the takeaway from today and call to action OK, is I want you to take your age. Don't say it out loud, but take your age and add 20 years to it. Right. And I want you to close your eyes just for a second. You ready? Here we go. Go open your eyes. All right. So watch this. Whatever your age is. Right. If you're 30 years old, 50 years old today, you actually met a magic gene that transported you back 20 years in time. Now, how do you know I'm wrong? Right. Because you're here today right? 20, 30 years from now, because one day you will be that 20 years older and wish that you could do it again. But you got it today. So my call to action is you're 20 years younger. You got your wish, your magic wish. There's a lot of amazing things you just sacrificed. OK, but you got a chance to do it again. Right. Go for it today. Right. Don't wait till you're, you know, 80 years old going, oh, my gosh, I wish I was, you know, 60. Right. Don't wish. And, you know, shoot, even if you're 80 right now watching this, you know, you could be 100 years old going, man, I wish I could get those 20 years back. Go do it today. Right. right. Do the things that you fear the most and death of fear is certain. Right. Go for it. Your life can absolutely. It's 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 seriously um, something that you can um, uh, improve on. And you can have a great life in your faith. You're, I'm not going to try all seven, okay? You can have a great right. life in all those areas. Man, heck, if you master half of those, or not even master, if you improve half of those, you know, your, your quality of life uh, is going to be amazing. And, and, and don't go, don't have any more regrets. Go try, right? Go try, right? Because trying is, 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 is the start of, of some of the most amazing adventures that you could have. I don't know where our life is going to be, okay? But I hope in certain directions it's going to be like this but i know it's going to take work nothing see this is the uh, the 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 closing i guess mentality of it all is you know the the takeaway is treat it like you just got your wish and you're 20 years younger right but see the 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 mentality of it all is that success is never permanent and failure is never fatal so don't worry about failing but also don't ever think that success is going to keep happening if you don't keep making it happen so keep getting better Drive yourself, push yourself, and do the right things long enough, and success will be inevitable in whatever you're doing right now. And trust your gut. Go follow somebody that has the life that you want, right? Go, fi go find somebody that has the relationships that you want and get rid of the people that don't, right? Because you cannot, you absolutely cannot afford to let people, you know, influence you that don't have what you want in life. Now, that doesn't mean right. you ignore people or you trying to what, what you do is you you know don't force yourself into in, into certain relationships um right. because I, I think that's been a major um you know uh, uh, a quality of life booster for us is that we let live we live and let live right we don't try and please everybody and um you know we we, we do our best to improve so so that song that comes to mind to me when you say that um don't force yourself into something is if it don't fit don't force it, just relax and let it be. Right, you, you know that song? You I guys don't. No, but it sounds great when anything that you sing sounds good. So I'm going to look that up, though, for sure. Right. I'm going to find it for you and send it to you. I Please don't know do. about anybody else today, but I have definitely been inspired. I've been filled to the overflow. Jason, you are just a phenomenal force and a resource um, of fuel for others. And so... If you took away nothing else today from Jason sharing his heart and his journey, what you need to remember is do it today, the thing that you've been wanting to do. And with these seven Fs that um, Jason provided me with, faith, family, friendship, 
confirmed finances, I'm sorry, for others and fitness. You get those seven F's in alignment and you're going to live a phenomenal life. So Jason, I wanted to thank you so much again for agreeing to come on and share with my, my listening audience, just things that they can do that will help them to fuel the fire within their lives as you've learned to fuel the fire in your life. So I pray that this has been fuel for fire for you coming directly from the mouth of Jason Cueva. I am so honored to call you friend. I am so honored to be able to glean from you. And I want to give a special shout out and a thanks for the person that um, introduced us to one another. And that is my fitness guru, uh, my fitness mentor, Mr. Coach Mike Harris. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, for, um, for you again, tell Jen, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful for her allowing me, you know, us to have this time. I hate that she wasn't able to be on, but I understand that duty calls. And so for those takeaways, if you guys want to make sure that you stay connected with Jason, his information, his IG information is across the bottom of the screen. So make sure that you connect with him if you want to continue to be inspired and empowered um, to continue to thrive in all areas of your life connect with Jason and find out more about what he does in other aspects of his life and how he can help you too to thrive. So thank you again for tuning in to Michelle Speaks. If you hide it, you can't feel it. Look forward to seeing you again. Tune in to the next episode. Take care, be well, and God bless. Thank you, Jason. All right. My pleasure. Love you, Michelle. Thank you. Love you too. Don't sign it.